Hello and welcome to the Slackware Arm Vlog. Um, if you've been following the channel, um, you'll know that we've been working on integrating support for the Raspberry Pi 5 into Slackware ARCH64. There's a generic Raspberry Pi Slackware installer image. This image supports installation on the Raspberry Pi 3, although we don't really support that anymore because we don't have one that works. Um, but in theory, it should, it should still work on the Raspberry Pi 3, but I don't know. But it certainly it works on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 400. And the idea is that this will also support the Raspberry Pi 5. We're going to use the tool called SARE, which stands for Slackware ARCH64 Installer Respin. And it's going to modify the generic image and it's going to replace the kernel with the Raspberry Pi kernel fork. So that's the Raspberry Pi developers version of the upstream Linux kernel with all of their fixes and new hardware support and all of that stuff. So it's going to replace the um, standard Slackware kernel package with that with the Raspberry Pi kernel fork version that has the support for a Raspberry Pi 5 in it. Make a few of the changes as well and then provide a new version of the image. The upstream kernels are here on kernel.org. This is the official Linux kernel website where you can download the, the kernel source code from. Once the Raspberry Pi 5 support makes it into the upstream kernel, then in theory, we should be able to use the single generic image for all of the Raspberry Pi variants. But at the moment, we have to make a separate one because the support's not in the kernel. Um, so we're going to use SARE to do that. So I have this shell script here that calls SARE with all of the uh, appropriate command line options. So just run I RPI SARE like that. So that's going to now um, modify the generic image and produce a new version. Okay, so the process has completed and we have our new install image here. So I'm just gonna copy that over to my uh, Linux box, or my other Linux box. I actually tried, so th this is the, what I'm using here, this is UTM on the Mac. So I'm, I have a MacBook, uh, an Apple Silicon MacBook, so it's, it's an ARCH64, ARM64 Apple Mac. So I'm running Slackware ARCH64 in a VM on my Mac. I've got, I've got other YouTube videos and documentation if you're interested in doing it. Now the thing is though with, with UTM is that I couldn't find a way to actually expose the USB port on my Mac so I could just DD this directly, you know, plug it in, plug the USB adapter, the SD card adapter into the USB socket of my Mac and just DD it there. I, you can't do that with uh, native virtualization. So I've copied it over to my x86 box. Right, so I've got the uh, SD card for the Raspberry Pi in here. So I just need to press it into my x86. Right, should be SDB, usually it is. Yeah, slash TMB. Cat. So I've done this a few times, as you can see. Uh, LPI5, let me just check that is actually the right one. Yeah, that's the one. Right, so we're going to now dump that image onto the SD card. Okay, so the installer image has successfully been written to the SD card, so I just need to now remove it from the x86 machine and put it into the Raspberry Pi 5. Right, there we go, so let's just remove that. Remove the SD card, then we need to insert it into the Raspberry Pi 5. So you can see my Raspberry Pi 5 is just kind of, you know, <laughs> it's in development mode right now. We do have the case here ready to install it into, but um, I'm just waiting for, well, I'm waiting to complete the development really, to, because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have, um, I didn't have, have to redo anything. I don't have to sit it. I didn't want to seat it in the case and then realize that, uh, I had to remove it for the case. So at the moment it's going to stay like this until I've completed the development. Okay, so on this screen, we're going to have the Raspberry Pi 5 serial console output. On this screen, we'll have the HDMI. That's our keyboard and there's our mouse. So the first thing that we need to do is to turn on the Raspberry Pi, which has a little power button just where the red LED is. So we lightly press that. Forgot to actually start the serial console. So there we go. There's your, there's the machine. And you'll be able to follow the boot also on the left-hand side on the serial console. And of course, on the HDMI monitor. 
There we go. Okay, so it's just uh, bringing up the network and there we go. And on the left hand side, we have a Getty waiting for you to uh, log in. So this though is the installer, this is not the, the OS, right? So in the installation guide for the Raspberry Pi on Slackware and, and all of the others actually, apart from the Honeycomb, we explain how to install using the local, using the virtual console, which in this case really means the HDMI monitor and a keyboard, because that's what most people will have. If you want to conduct the installation over the serial, you can do so. You just log in as root like that, press enter. There is no password, so you just press enter. You can set a root password on the Slackware installer if you wish. There is a uh, kernel command line operator that takes a password, so you can do that if you feel the need to do that, but by default there isn't one. So I'll conduct the installation using the monitor and the keyboard. So this message here has appeared because I've just logged in over the serial port. Normally you wouldn't see that. Um, now the first thing, is ordinarily you would create yourself some partitions for your file systems. Um, because obviously I've been developing this already, I have the the NVMe here, so I have this NVMe hat. I'm not going to turn it over because it is plugged in and I don't want to disrupt it. But so I'm my storage is running off of NVMe. Uh, if you look at the Raspberry Pi 4 guide, you'll see we suggest using the USB ports with a SATA converter. In fact, actually, uh, this is the Raspberry Pi. Oh, can we see it there? This is the Raspberry Pi 4 here, and the Raspberry Pi 4 runs off a USB to SATA converter like that with an SSD in it. But yeah, so what we're doing here with the Raspberry Pi 5 is we're using an NVMe hat. It works really well. Um, so I've already made my partitions here. So I've got an eight gig Linux swap. Actually, that's <laughs> way overkill because this machine is a uh, is is a sixteen gigabyte RAM variant of the Raspberry Pi five. So uh, yeah, we uh, so here's my Raspberry Pi five there. So yeah, eight gigs is overkill. It's just that I this NVMe drive actually came from a different machine um, that had where they had less RAM. So yeah, if I used anywhere close to that, you've got a problem. So I just haven't, I just haven't really done the partition scheme. Anyway, the point is I've already got my partitions, so I don't need to create new ones. So what we're gonna do now is run the um, setup program. Okay. And we can map our key map. Uh, pick the UK map in my case, because that's the keyboard that I have. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, format X4. Okay. Right. So then the installer will ask you if you want to install the packages from the package set that's, that comes on the SD card installer image. Um, so the answer is yes, we do. So you press yes, just select everything and then do a full installation like that. Okay, so the packages have all installed. Um, because this is a development version of the installer, we have a deliberate pause before we enter the post um, installation configuration phase. Um, so that, that allows you to just test anything or ha hack on anything. So we're just gonna press resume and then wait for it to move through the post installation phase. So it's making a few changes because we're using a Raspberry Pi kernel fork, not the official Linux Torvalds kernel. Making a few other changes from SARE, um, which basically at the moment just enables re remote uh, root logins over SSH because it just means it's easier for me. I don't, don't recommend that normally, but yeah. It, we're in development mode at the moment. So let's wait for the font config to do its thing. Yes, we will load the mouse driver. Yeah, we'll do that. So. We'll call it RPI5 arm dot slack where dot com. Like that. So I don't do that. Network manager, yes. And I'll start RPC like I always do, because I always use NFS. Yes. 
yes, we want to try some custom screen fonts, otherwise it's a little bit small. So 732B is the best one for me anyway. And this is the 732B is the one that's actually you're using right now in the installer. So if you like it, use that one. It's all in the installation guide for the Raspberry Pi. Um, no, I'm actually in London. Well, not really, but it'll do. Right there, KDE, yeah, let's use that. Password, set ourselves as a password. Okay, cool. And then exit. Now, if you guys um, want to play around with uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 experimental image, you may want to drop into a shell um, so that you can test things or check anything. The Slackware OS is mounted under slash MNT. So if you look, HL, HL would be better, wouldn't it? Oh, okay, busy box doesn't support HL. Okay, whatever. So, um, um, yeah, so the, the OS is mounted here under slash MNT. So you've got your Slackware OS here and you can check, if you want to check the um, Raspberry Pi bootloader config, you'll find that's in here, slash uh, boot platform HWMBW. And that's where the Raspberry Pi bootloader stuff is. There's the Linux kernel command line file. Cart, no, cat's not cart. Boot line. So there's the Linux uh, kernel command line. And then you've got the config file, the, the bootloader config file called config.txt. So you can edit that, whatever you want to do. And then when you're ready, just do reboot, press enter, and you'll see the machine reboot. And then and because we have it connected to the serial port, we'll also see the machine um, We'll see the uh, bootloader information first on the left, and then we'll see the kernel booting as well on the right. So, like that. There we go. It takes a moment longer on the first boot because it has to set a few things up. But you'll see, I haven't edited this at all. This is the speed at which it boots. So, I'm going to log in as root. Okay. So I'm gonna add myself my pleb account. So I'll just switch to a different console. Okay, so let's log in as my pleb account now. And start X. So we just got regular X11. You can set up Wayland if you wanna use Wayland, but I always use X11, uh, or Xorg, sorry, I forgot. It's called Xorg, it's been called Xorg for quite some years. Okay, so there's KDE. Um, I haven't edited this. This is the speed that it actually loads up at. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, if you want to use um, you know, Firefox or whatever, there's Firefox. That'll probably take a little bit longer to load than usual because it's the first load. But I don't know if the date's probably wrong. I don't know. So we can go to here. We'll, we'll soon see if, it, if the date's wrong. Oh no, it's fine. Okay, so here we were assembling the Raspberry Pi 5 in the first boot test, and now we've got the Slackware installer on it. So what I don't have working at the moment is the sound. I've set a few Linux kernel command line options to try and figure it out, and I haven't got it working yet, but in due course, we'll get that working. But if you guys want to play around with uh, the Raspberry Pi with this experimental build of the, of the installer for it, then let me know in the comments or on the forum uh, or on Fosterdon. Let me know and uh, I can upload it for you. All right, well, that's this episode concluded. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for all your support. I really appreciate it because I love working on this, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Bye.